But if I can if I can get to 25, I should be able to upgrade my Scania engine to the top line. I think it's a 720 if I remember. The R720. Uh, and that will be that for the upgrades in terms of the engine on the Scania. Those water towers up there, you see that? Whenever I see those things, they just... They just remind me of um, Chinaris and Daisy. You keep seeing those water towers. Uh, at the towns in, in Daisy and Chinaris. Ah, balloon. So hopefully, depending on what time we get to the... I think we're going to end up with a midnight drive, aren't we? We're going to take the ferry. It's going to be in the middle of the night, I think, by the time we get there. Which is a shame because I wanted to... You really need to appreciate the Scandinavian mod in the daytime. It's, it's just beautifully done. And the road systems are done in such a different style to what SCS normally do. In SCS they're quite simplified down. But in the Pro mod, they're more kind of realistic. So you get these like loops and twists and turns and some of the Norwegian mountains are an absolute pain. They're so twisty. I can let you out dude. You could have pulled out though. Never mind. That AI. So let me just uh, let me just tell you how I plan on running. Because obviously YouTube and live stream, uh, I've got those both platforms now. If you like, I am a, obviously a content producer, and I have both of those platforms. Now, more recently, I've been focusing on streaming. I spent a couple of weeks just focused on streaming. And the reason I did that was I was because I was trying to build up uh, my stream in terms of the people that were watching it and the number of views that I got on it. Uh, because the way Twitch works is you can only get certain features when you become bigger and more popular. Uh, one of the features that I was after was the subscriber icon. Now again, if you're new to Twitch, you won't understand what that is. But essentially, if you now go to my Twitch page, you will see that there is a, uh, a subscribe button. And what does a subscribe button do? Well, a subscribe button is, is where you basically pay $5 a month. Uh, half of that goes to Twitch, and then half of it goes to me to support my stream, if you like. You're supporting me directly, uh, and you're supporting the Twitch environment. But you will get a number of benefits from doing this. Uh, one of the things is on Twitch you won't see any adverts when you're on my stream so whenever I run adverts which is you know usually about every hour or so you won't see them uh, they just won't be there that's one benefit another benefit is you will be you will have access to the subscriber icon so whenever you chat in the chat next to your name in the Twitch page you will have a little a squirrel icon to show that you're a squirrel subscriber, which is kind of cool. And you'll also have access to the emoticons. Now, the emoticons are kind of like fun bits of graphic that you can use in the chat. And they have now been uh, sent to me. I got a professional artist to to create some emoticons for me. And they're now completed, and I have sent them off to Twitch today, as it happens. So they should be live in a few days' time. And final things, final benefits, I'm going to add a lot more benefits for my subscribers on Twitch. Uh, so you'll get access to some things, I can't announce them just yet. But there will be subscriber only giveaways, and uh, as well as my normal giveaways. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously not alienating people that don't subscribe, not at all. But to uh, to obviously give back, because you know, I don't, I'm not really keeping that money, I'm just going to use that money to, to feed back into my community and to build my channel as it were. So I'll use, I'll use the money perhaps to buy games which I'll then give away back to the subscribers. So, you know, there's all kinds of little things that I can do. All kinds of benefits that I've got ideas for. But they're going to take me time to do. But I'm going I'm to bring them in. Uh, but you don't have to subscribe. You just need to follow and, you know, take part in a live stream. Try it out. See what you think. But in terms of how I will use the platform of Twitch versus YouTube, that's the, the more interesting thing. So, <clears throat> essentially, on YouTube, you're going to see, certainly you're going to see offline games that I record. By offline games, I mean things like Eurotruck, which, you know, Eurotruck's not an online game. Uh, you know, Bridge Project, this kind of thing. Um, sim games, if you like, strategy games that I might do. 
these are the kind of things that you're going to see on YouTube like edited stuff pre-recorded edited stuff and then on Twitch I'll more focus it for online games so where I'm playing with other people perhaps other YouTubers uh, or guys in the squad that kind of thing so when I do for example DayZ or Payday or Armor Wasteland I'll stream it live as I'm playing that's the kind of thing you're going to see on Twitch but also I will stream offline games on Twitch so occasionally I'm going to be doing Euro Truck streams I might do Kerbal Space Program streams um, speed camera I think we're at the docks yes we are um, so that's how I intend to take this thing now occasionally I will edit and upload my streams to YouTube as well but they will only ever be in 720 they're not going to be they're not going to be in 1080 like my normal videos simply because I stream at 720 um, it's pointless streaming any higher because most people can't watch a live stream any higher anyway but that was just to basically answer the question of of how I intend to run things right there's no parking to do on this one just pull up and press the enter key as it were Handbrake, neutral, and enter. Crap, which one do we want to go to? Uh, I think it's that one. I really hope I just went the right way. <laughs> if I didn't go the right way. <laughs> well, luckily for us guys, look, it's 7am. She's awesome. That means it's daytime. We're going to be making a full daytime delivery and I'm fully rested. That's great. Now, this is obviously new territory here. You see the buildings? Look at this. It's just, it's just so different. It has such a different feel to it. Beautiful. Wait till you get on the roads and you see what I mean. Bit of a squeeze out of that. Oh, the steering wheel was juddering around then. Right, it's just calculated our deliveries uh, four and a half hours more, but you'll you'll get to see a lot of the pro mod map now. This is all pro mod. This is not in the default game. You cannot go to these places unless you install that pro mod. And I'm on the left hand. I do this every time I get off the ferry. I'm on the wrong side of the road. Luckily, I avoided a collision. I do it every time. I'm perfectly capable of driving on either side of the road, but just when I get off a ferry, I don't make the switch automatically. Let's just pull up here. And while we're waiting, let's have a quick look outside. Look, look at these buildings. Isn't it beautiful? The detail. I love that sunrise. That sunrise is so nice. Let's put the uh, put the map back on so we can see where we're going. The sat nav. Now, those of you who remember when I first got the Logitech G27, and uh, I basically went through my learning curve while making videos and doing live streams, and I got so many messages of, well, not just support, but of people telling me how to drive better and how to watch my rev counter and you know how to how and when to change gears I mean it's just the most mind-blowing message I got was from a guy who basically said to me obviously you know your revs are way too high you want to be changing at around 1500 rpm uh, in that Scania so you need to watch you know you, you just and, and this is the most mind-blowing thing he said to me was you can start in fourth gear he just said, you don't need to start in first gear or second gear. First, first to three are, are pretty much useless. Uh, just start in fourth gear. And that was, from a, from a guy that's used to driving a car, the idea of starting a, a vehicle in fourth gear was just, was just absurd. It was just mind-blowing. It was like, what? But I got in the truck, put it in fourth gear, and phew, just pulled away, no problem. Obviously, this is just completely uh, basic knowledge to a trucker. 
But a person coming from a car, from used to driving cars, to driving trucks, this is a phenomenon. It tr really is. So I have the gear shift so that it changes through even numbered gears. So I go two, four, six, eight, ten. Uh, sorry, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve is how I use my H shifter, and that's all configurable within your truck. But until I, until somebody taught me this stuff, I hadn't got a bloody clue. So in essence, I'm passing this information on. That's one of the reasons I went through the learning experience uh, myself, was so that anything I learned, I could then pass on. But essentially, it comes down to this. A truck has a phenomenal amount of torque. Which links me to something else that people say to me. They drive Volvo trucks because they're more powerful, like they have the most powerful engine in the game. Uh, which is true. Apart from, obviously, the there is a mod you can get for a Scania that's the concept truck, which has a 1,000 brake horsepower. It's an, called a Scania R1000. It's a concept truck, but in all honesty, most trucks are in the kind of 400 brake horsepower range. That's where most trucking is done. You know, more horsepower means a bigger engine, which means more fuel consumption. Um, so you don't want to... <laughs> there's no point in having a truck which is more powerful than it needs to be. It will just waste fuel. And when, you, when you're talking the mileage of these things and the miles per gallon that you get out of a, a truck, it's very, very costly. So even a 5% saving over the over you know the period of a year can be a massive amount of money which is why even Eddie Stobart's re, you know in the real world Eddie Stobart's truck drivers are paid a bonus at the end of the year if they drive their truck in a fuel efficient manner and that means they have to if you look at the rev counter down there you'll see there's a green zone if they keep their rev range within that green zone they'll be fuel efficient if they do that all that data is reported back to Eddie Stobart and uh, back at HQ. They will pay them a bonus. They pay them a percentage of uh, the money they saved. They, the money they saved their company in fuel. And all this is really important to a logistics company. Fuel is one of the, the big costs. And it's not like the price of fuel is ever coming down either. So anyway, um, just bringing me back to the original point. Torque is actually more important than brake horsepower when it comes to a truck. It's pulling power is the most important thing. And like any engine, the maximum torque happens at, at a certain RPM. And you can actually see that stat. It will say uh, so, many, so many newton meters at this certain RPM. So you can find out where that is. And pretty much that's where you want to be changing gear. Just, you know, just after your maximum torque. Now the only reason to change gear, I mean, this, I'm just passing on to you what I've been taught by truck drivers, basically, in various emails that have, have had come into me. But just at the top of my green zone is at about 1600 RPM on this truck. And that is pretty much on a flat surface. That's pretty much where I should be changing so that my next gear change brings me um, the rev counter back to about 11, 1200. Now, if you're going up a very steep incline, while I'm talking, guys, just look at the scenery. I mean, seriously. Wow. If, I'm, if you're going up a very steep, steep incline, then you've got a different problem. At that point, you're not really interested in fuel efficiency you're interested in getting the load up that hill and what that means is you want to be going past the maximum torque rpm going past it to the point where when you change gear your rev counter drops back to the point where you're generating maximum torque so i might go up to something like 1800 or even 1900 rpm so that when i change gear um, and then engage the gear I'm back at sort of 14, 1500 RPM, which is roughly where maximum torque is. And that means the engine is still perfectly capable of pulling that load. It all makes sense once it's pointed out to you. But until it's pointed out to you, you wouldn't even realize. And uh, as I've said before, I am not a trucker who became a gamer. I am a gamer who, who, who well, didn't really become a trucker, but plays truck sims. 
And so, you know, like any simulation, I'm learning how to get the best out of it. And I like to play this thing, you know, as realistically as I can. I'm still super grateful to the guy who um, got me this steering wheel. It's just the most amazing part, the, the most amazing thing, apart from the track IR. Those two things make this such a good experience in terms of simulation. I would love, you know, when I talk to the guy from SCS, one of the things I'm going to talk to him about is, is he going to uh, make the game more realistic? Add more options to make it more realistic. This is Odense on the left, by the way. Let's just change lane. This is the town of Odense. You should visit these towns. They're, they're, they're just amazing. I mean, all of them. There's so much detail. But when I talk to the guy from SCS, Mr. Uh, Pavel, I'm going to be saying to him, you know, you should look at a lot of simulation games, like Flight Sims in particular, offer a world of options to make a game more realistic, but equally the options allow you to turn that off if, if you don't want it. You know, you can get things like X-Plane that you can have to sit there for 30 minutes just going through startup procedures to get off the, the runway. You know, no kidding. You've got to start the, the coils, warm the coils up and get the engine running, get the mix right, you know. So the detail is just unbelievable. I'm not suggesting he goes that far with Eurotruck, but I am suggesting that he could bring much more detail into this game, but allow you to turn it off if it's not something that you fancied. I'm distracted by this wonderful scenery. Going over yet another bridge. I guess if you live in Denmark, some of this will even be familiar to you. Uh, for me, it's just wondrous, <laughs> quite frankly. And these, this bridge is absolutely enormous. You don't, you don't get anything like quite like this in the UK. I think maybe the Seven Bridge is probably the biggest bridge I've gone across. I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, I, I would, um, I'd be looking for more realistic physics in the game. I'd be looking for crushed, you know, crash damage. I'd like to see the truck get dirty and I have to clean it or just leave it dirty, you know. If I drive through rain, it would obviously get covered in mud. If I went off, if I went down a quarry, I would come back plastered in crap and I'd have to go and get my truck cleaned. Elements of realism that can, of course, just be turned off, like the fatigue thing can just be turned off. Actually, I'm in the wrong lane. Wasn't paying that much attention. Now, someone told me that this right-hand lane is made for trucks. Oh, uh, not that one. They obviously lied. <laughs> the right-hand lane is supposedly made for trucks, and the gate opens a bit longer. Personally, personally, I'm not convinced, but I tend to stay on the right just in case. I would like an automatic pay system, though. Um... You know, most most truckers. Let's move over because I don't. I oh know he's going. Um, when I get to, hello, hello. What are these guys doing? Oh, damn it! Are you gonna let me out, mate? Yeah, you're gonna let me out. Sorry, mate, but you're just acting like a complete banana. So you're gonna have to wait for me now. When I go through things like the Dartford Crossing, which is a crossing near where I live, uh, goes over the Thames Estuary that comes into London. Uh, <clears throat> that crossing, though, you can get this thing called the Dart Tag, which is a, a, like, like an electronic device that you stick to your wind windscreen or your windshield. And um, as you approach the barriers, there are sensors at the barriers that pick up on this. And essentially, your device is linked to an account that you can just top up on the website. You just add money to it. Just add ten pounds, fifteen pounds, whatever. As you approach the crossing, it just goes beep like that. It just makes a beeping noise, and the gate opens, and it just bills your account. That saves you having to have any money, any change, you know, sort of fumbling around in your purse or whatever as you approach a delivery point, which is infinitely annoying for everybody. It's much quicker if everybody uses the tag. 
uh, and it's also cheaper it's actually a lot less money things like that uh, could be put into this game so that I could just approach these things and they would just automatically build me rather than me having to stop and press enter you know why not have you noticed on the road did you see that E20 so it seems in Denmark they actually paint the the number of the road on the ground look E20 Kahavan We're actually not that far away from our delivery point. There's a plane taking off. I hope you've enjoyed this kind of introduction to the Pro Mod map. And, uh, you know, as we approach the delivery point, I just want to say don't forget this truck and trailer is available for download. Um, please, if you are going to use it, well, use it, private use, absolutely fine. But if you're the kind of guy that's going to make videos out of it or whatever, then please remember to um, attribute the name, the guy who created the mod on my behalf. Please remember to attribute his name. And also I would ask, uh, politely ask that you um, link to my channel and say, you know, this is obviously what it's based on for people that don't know. Just just be polite, you know, don't, don't be an ass. In the modding world, I love it when people... Um, it's called uh, what's it called Appro approbation, where they basically say, you know, this mod is based on this other mod which this guy did. You know, they don't just say this is on my work. <laughs> Look, this I, I sent the images to this to a guy and he created it for me. His name is in the video description. Be sure to mention him, give him a shout out if you're the kind of person that posts things somewhere else. Apart from that, I'm quite happy for anybody to just share this thing out and enjoy it you can of course then feel part of squirrel logistics which is the whole point where are we going here we're we going up here i think we're going up here there's some bizarre set of roads here look at this wall it's like outer wall crap look at this made out of wood renault mm -mm. go and work for eddie stobart sir i'm surprised eddie stobart uses renault i actually posted a an image of a Eddie Stobart Renault truck. Traditionally, Eddie Stobart as a company tend to use Scania. I can't believe they're actually using a Renault. What the hell is wrong with them? I swear Renault must have just given them the truck and said, you know, please, just use this. Please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Even so, if I'd have been Eddie Stobart, I'd have just gone, nah, not interested, mate. Stick with my Scanias. Uh, here we are in Kerben Hearn, Kerben Haven. Who knows how the hell you say it? Look at these containers here. You, I tell you, when you get to the shipyards, they look fantastic. And there are some bits where you get onto a ship and you have to drive around uh, some vehicles and crash barriers and into the back of the ship. Just lots of little things that uh, make it more interesting and slightly more difficult. But this, the feel of this here, look, it's just not SCS, is it? brick walls on the left kind of rustic concrete uh, fences on the right it just has a very different feel to what SCS do and I love that oh we're not going right here let me just this is the yard here by the look of it there we go ooh what's that it's concrete tubing or something seems like a very odd place to deliver dry milk But, oh, look at, those, look at those diggers over there. It's like three diggers lined up. The loads of little details they've managed to put into this map is just so cool. Let's get over here. Reverse this thing in. Into reverse. Screw logistics. It just looks so beautiful. No, I do not want auto parking. Just straighten that up now. I think that should do it. A bit more back. 
There we go. There we go. Handbrake neutral. Engine off. And deliver the load. Liverpool to Copenhagen. If you are still hearing that slight noise in the menu, I've still not solved that problem, so I do apologise. Not far off level 25. Job is delivered. Let's move away from this, shall we? Into the sunshine. And we'll just pull up that. Have a look outside. Look at the back. Look at that. How cool is that? Scroll down the side, scroll down the front, and of course, scroll logistics. Anyway, uh, go ahead and download this pro mod pack and download the squirrel logistics trailer and the squirrel truck. You can choose white or black, whatever you fancy. Only available for the Scania. I really hope you enjoy and get a lot of pleasure out of that. That's all for me in this video. Take care, guys. And happy trucking.